Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This video is slightly different because this is actually an assignment submission for my class. Uh, I am currently taking a multicultural education class, pedagogy and practice, and the assignment was to define what multicultural education really means. So in this presentation, I am just going to, or in this video, my apologies, I am just going to go over what multicultural education really means, what are the historical implications behind it, and just what has actually influenced and uh, molded what that definition really means for us today. So um, if you have not already, please be sure to subscribe. And if you do like this video, please be sure to click like. If you have a comment, you can leave one in the comment section below. And if you're in my class, please leave a comment in the uh, blog section of Blackboard. Um, so just stay tuned and I'm going to go ahead and go through what the definition of multicultural education really is. So when we think about multicultural education, I think that we initially have that very um, limited view, which is just trying to incorporate things that represent various cultures into a curriculum. So if it's an English class, you try to make sure you read things um, that are representative of all the cultures, as many cultures you can think of uh, or can address in a class. Um, of the world, but that is just really one facet of what multicultural education is. Um, and so what it really is, is the recognition, acceptance, integration of culture into a curriculum. Um, so we all have to recognize that when we think about culture, it is not just race, um, but it represents all these different things, all these different nuances that make us us. So a 13 year old girl who is from rural Nebraska is not having the same experience as a 13 year old girl who is from Manhattan. And those are all cultural nuances that need to be addressed in curriculum um, in order to make sure that you're actually creating a multicultural curriculum. So when you think about multicultural education, you have to think about how you're addressing all of those things and accepting those things and integrating those things into your actual curriculum. And so when you really think about the research itself and where it really came, how it really came about, it really does seem to be um, fairly new when you really consider how long people have been talking about education and how people learn. Um, but it really was just based on these researchers who decided to go into classrooms um, for teachers who are experiencing success, success with students who have um, been labeled as disadvantaged students. And the question is, why are these teachers experiencing success? So what exactly is it that they are doing that is um, making these students succeed compared to other, other um, teachers? Okay, so we're going to move on to the next question, which is how do laws, policy, and history impact this particular definition of multicultural education? Uh, and so one thing that we really have to consider is that laws, policy, um, history, those are things that are all influenced by a majority or whatever group is in power. And so when you really think about it in those terms, when you think about multicultural education being something that is empowering and accepting of all these different um, cultures, it actually is really a contradictory concept um, because realistically, these groups, these dominating groups, in order to maintain that power to still be a dominating group has essentially kind of just made other groups assimilate or just try to eliminate groups altogether. Um, and because of the fact that the majority was trying to assimilate, eliminate, and manipulate various cultures, this definition just did not exist for quite some time. Uh, which is why I think there are so many people that have such a surface understanding or definition of what they think multicultural education is, that it is just incorporating these different cultures. Because the fact of the matter is, multicultural education is really empowering these groups of people. And in order to empower these groups of people who were not empowered before, who power, whose power was taken, it requires a shift in what we understand to be our power dynamic. Okay. So the next question is, is it one dimensional? And so multicultural education, of course, is not one dimensional because culture is not one dimensional. Um, so if we really think about Dr. James A. Banks, he actually outlined five dimensions. And so those dimensions are content integration, knowledge construction, equity pedagogy, 
prejudice reduction, and empowering school culture and social structure. So when we think of content integration, that's actually what we always think about, just making sure that we're incorporating um, things that represent um, various cultures. However, like I said before, there's much more to it than that. We are also looking at the concept of knowledge construction, uh, which pretty much means um, that teachers are not only sharing their content with their students, but they are also helping them to critically think about the implications of their content. So they aren't necessarily just saying, okay, well, here's the information. They are putting them in a position where they're really starting to analyze, well, what does this mean? You're reading this text by an author, but this is this author's background. How does this influence what this author says and how this author perceives uh, what um, he's talking about or she's talking about this particular topic? We think of equity, in uh, pedagogy, that actually really means that the teacher is providing various methods to address uh, a student's zone of proximal development. And so that zone of proximal development is pretty much where students are at that position where they are, they're being challenged enough so that they still feel like they can push forward, but it's not so much that it's just out of their scope and they can't really um, function in it or do what's been presented to them. Um, so, like I said, when you're thinking about equity, the teacher is making sure they're addressing all of these different cultures so that we think of that zone of proximal development, all of those um, students are being addressed in that class. And so when we think about prejudice reduction, and I think that one is very simple and straightforward. It, it pretty much, it helps kids develop more positive racial attitudes because it's when you are working on eliminating prejudice within a classroom. And so you're giving kids the skills that they need to be more reflective so they can recognize what, what those prejudices are and so that they can overcome those and they can stop if those are things that they're doing, that those are things that they can stop doing. And then number five is having an empowering school culture and an empowering social culture. And so the thing that is most important is that the entire school must look to recognize and empower all students. And sometimes schools don't recognize that they are empowering all students. Um, we can use an example, maybe as diverse learners, like diverse learners, there may be a school where the diverse learners, they're housed in a specific uh, space in the school, or just even when you're thinking about how students are, um, placed into classes, which classrooms they're in, which groups of students they're with, you know, which students get to take what types of classes. So are you empowering all students and giving them an equitable um, chance of success? And so the next question is, what are the major tenets of multicultural education? And I really think that when you're thinking about those major tenets, you can also just revisit what Dr. Um, James A. Banks talked about when he talked about those five dimensions of multicultural education. Because when multicultural <coughs> excuse me, when multicultural education is done properly, it provides a safe space that encourages and recognizes all cultures. And what Dr. James A. Banks has done with those five um, dimensions is he's made sure that that space can be created. Um, and there's also a space that empowers students so that they can become reflective and they can recognize and address inequities themselves and with the hopes of them creating new leaders to continue that uh, education. Okay, and so the next question, must it be contextualized? And so my answer to this is also absolutely, it must be contextualized. The fact of the matter is there's a difference in reading about something and then actually experiencing it. So the teachers who experienced the most success with students who were uh, labeled as um, disadvantaged students were teachers who they lived in the neighborhood, they were from the neighborhood, or the, you know they made a note of really getting out to into communities to understand what their students' experiences were like and to just understand all of those nuances, uh, cultural nuances that you won't, you can't learn necessarily in a book. So if you, if it needs, if you're thinking about, um, must it be contextualized? Yes, it absolutely must be contextualized so that you can really understand what your uh, students' experiences are like. So the next question is, how does it impact students and impact student learning? Um, so in the How and Lisi book, they did quote Gloria Lansing Billings, um, and they referenced the fact that she noted that the greater the gap between a student's culture and the school's culture, the more likely it was that a student would fail. And so just in the reverse, the smaller that gap, the more successful a student would be. Um, and the fact of the matter is, this is really because culture is directly to related to how we learn and how we perceive things. And that's something that people don't recognize. So when we think about students and student learning, we need to recognize 
just all those nuances about their culture because that's going to help us when we're providing instructions to students. Um, it's not a one size fit all, which is what lots of schools try to do, try to say, okay, this particular curriculum is going to save everyone. That is not the case. Now we need to revisit that zone of proximal development. How are we um, addressing all these cultural nuances so that students can be met where they need to be met so that they can be as successful as possible? So the next question, is it fixed? Is multicultural um, education fixed? When you're thinking about their pedagogy, no, it is not fixed because I'm going to keep saying it. Culture is not something that is fixed. Culture has so many nuances. So yes, there are researchers and there's research that says this particular cultural group learns best this way. This particular cultural group learns best that way. However, that doesn't mean again, it's not a one size fit all because culture has so many different facets to it. So what you need to do as an instructor is you need to make sure that you're addressing again, the zone of proximal development, which I feel like I've said that a lot, but you do need to address that zone of proximal development. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that you incorporate all of those different things that you've learned about how different cultural groups learn, because one thing that may benefit one particular cultural group may also benefit another. So you can't just say we're going to do this one particular thing and this is how um, our students are going to experience success. The last question that I'm going to address is actually is uh, multi that definition of multicultural education is that related to bias, prejudice, and equity, critical race theory, or culturally responsive teaching? And if so, what are those connections? So just in my opinion, I do think that it is actually inspired by bias and inequity, and it's driven by critical race theory and cultural, culturally responsive teaching. Um, and so I say this because the bias and inequity and recognizing that we realize that we have to begin addressing these gaps that are uh, represented there for all of these different um, cultural groups. Now we know, yes, something is wrong. But then when you look at the critical race theory and the culturally responsive teaching, these are two things that are helping to kind of lay a path for us um, for that curricular improvement. So now we, we, are, we have these ideas of what it is that we need to do so that we can actually have multicultural, um, truly multicultural education in our classes. So as just a very quick recap to um, what multicultural education is, uh, multicultural education is something that is, it's almost like this new budding thing that we're doing and we're recognizing that it is not simply doing the surface things and the fun things where we are just introducing students to different kinds of foods, music, or we're just incorporating different um, cultural authors from different cultural backgrounds into our curriculum, it's much more than that. It's really digging into who you are as an instructor, who your students are, what their experiences are, and using all of that information to really provide um, the best instruction for them as possible to meet them where they are so that they can be successful. And it is also helping them understand how to empower themselves so that they can move forward and they can continue with this uh, cycle of just educating to eliminate the bias that is present there um, in curriculum and just really in the world. So if you are also interested in the references for this particular presentation, those are coming across the screen right now. And like I said, if you like this particular video, you can click like. Um, if you have not subscribed, you can subscribe. If you need to leave a comment, you can leave a comment in the comment section. And if you're in my class, please leave a comment on my uh, blog on Blackboard. So uh, thanks so much for just taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope this was informative and I hope to just kind of spark something in you to really make you think about how are you addressing your students, how we all are addressing our students. Um, so we're really supporting them so that they can be the, as successful as possible.